Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome to another uh, franchise uh, month. Yeah, this is uh, another superhero movie, but well this is a, t a movie this time, not a show. From DC, yeah, this is one of a uh, three-parter which I haven't got to the second or third part yet because the third part hasn't been released yet. But I did see the first part. And this is Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1 from 2024. Mostly focusing on The Flash, which I think was a good idea. Because the Flash is one of my favorite characters. The other Justice Leaguers are in it too. They just it's mostly focused on him. Yeah, this is the first part that came out uh, earlier this year. It came out in, in January, like a week after my birthday. It was written by Marv Wolfman and penciled by George Perez. The film was directed by Jeff Wamister from a script by Jer Jim Krieg. It's the eighth installment in the second phase of DC's animated movie universe. As well as the 24th film overall, being the first part of a trilogy. Yeah, because uh, the second part is coming out on, on Max, like on the 15th, and the third part's coming out the day after. And this was good. I liked it. I know Josh was like, oh, this is the weakest of the three so far. We don't know. We haven't seen the third part yet. But for a start, this is really good. It was dedicated to comic artist Jar George Perez before he died in 2022. May, may he rest in peace. The plot is, if you've seen Crisis on Infinite Earths on the CW, it's basically the same thing, except there's no Batwoman, there's no gay stuff. And also, it's a lot shorter. <laughs> yeah. An elderly John Constantine sets Barry Allen on a time trip to keep moments in his life from gaining his metahuman abilities to fight against the android Am Amazo to his wedding with Iris West. During the fight with Amazo, Superman gets injured and is aided by Barry Green, Ni Green Arrow and is brought to Bruce Wayne for medical help. Yeah, and, and the movie and the action ensues. And it's a really deep story. I mean, the voice cast is great. Especially, especially Meg Donnelly. She kind of gets underused here because this is not her film. But she gets the most emotional scene at the very end of part one. And I'm like, wow, Meg Donnelly can act. Yeah, the Disney Channel was just holding her back, making her this wannabe Disney princess. And I'm like, yeah, she's not a Disney princess. She's a singer and an actress. And when you give her something good like this, it works. Yes, I know the actor that plays the Flash here is gay. Do not tell me that in the comment section. Uh, Matt Bomer. But he did a good job for what he had to do. I mean, I'm not dating the guy. I'm not, I'm not gay, obviously. Darren Chris is Superman. He did a good job. Stana Kattuck is a good Wonder Woman, even though she's not in this one that much. You have Jensen Ackles, the guy from Supernatural, as Batman. That's a cool casting. You got uh, Jimmy Simpson as Green Arrow. Zachary Quinto, Lex Luthor again. Wink, witch, nudge, nudge. Jonathan Adams as the Monitor, who's the main villain of this storyline. He was the villain in the other Crisis. You got Ike Amati as Martian Manhunter. Jeffrey Arend as Psycho Pirate of Earth 2 and Hawkman. Uh, Zach Callison as Dick Grayson. Alexander Daddario as Lois Lane. That was cool. Alistair Duncan as Alfred Pennyworth. Matt Lancer as the Blue Beetle, the White Blue Beetle, not the Spanish Blue Beetle that we got last year. Uh, Yet Cynthia Hamidi as, uh, uh, as Dawnstar. I don't know who that is. Aldous Hodge as Green Lantern. He did the voice of Green Lantern in another movie. And he's also he was also the uh, Hawkman in, in Black Adam. Erica Ishii as Dr. Light. David Kay as Question. Uh, Liam McIntyre as Aquaman. I thought his voice didn't work. He's Australian, and I'm like, yeah. As Johnny Quick, I'm like, why does Johnny Quick have an Australian accent? He's not Australian in the comics. Captain Boomerang is. Not freaking Johnny Quick. I heard his voice in the, in the Lego DC Supervillains game. He doesn't have an, an Australian accent, mate. Yeah, he's probably the worst actor in the movie. Matt Ryan is, is John Constantine, but I never liked the character. So you get what you get. You get what you deserve. I didn't like him in the original Crisis or on the CW because he's, he, just, he just does this. For like half of the episodes, he does a Ooga Booga Bulls BS, and then, and then he's bisexual. Why? Because it's DC. What do you expect? And you have Harry Shum Jr. as Brainiac 5. And it's a really good story. I think it's well animated. It's more adults, just like the X-Men cartoon. Some cameos in it as well. I'm not going to say who if you haven't seen it. Uh, there's some uh, there's some Easter eggs in there. And it has a good pacing. It's under, under two hours, so that's great. Uh, yeah, uh, Rotten Tomatoes gave it 88%, but you know I don't trust them. I trust my gut. They praised the writing. Yeah, Justice League, Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1 finally gets the DC crossover event right. Well... They did it right in the CW. They just needed to cut a few things out, for my preference. 
Because, you know, Batwoman is not even a good, strong enough character to carry her own show. So her being there made no freaking sense. They just had her there because Batman was too expensive. Yeah, they, IGN rated it a 7 out of 10 saying, Part 1 knows what it is and strives to do it right with the source material. And there's no there's no padding in this. It's mostly just done real quickly. I haven't seen Part 2. I will review that possibly uh, in, in two weeks time. And then when Part 3 comes out, I'll see that. It comes out the 16th. The running time is 94 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty short. Well, that's, I think, for the sequel. And then there's, there's references, too. You have Terry McGinnis from Batman Beyond is going to be in Part 2. So I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, it's, it's a show that knows what... It, it's a movie that knows exactly what it is. And it's not for kids. It's PG-13. So if you have smaller children, this is not for them. Just because it's animated does not mean it's for them. And I would say see this. Then see Part 2. If you, know, if you haven't already, I will. And then three's coming out, so I'm looking forward to that. See, there's nothing to look forward to in July. And there's plenty of animation coming out on streaming. I know it's not in a the theater, but it's better than nothing. And that's just a little nod for, you know, you know who. Anyway, yeah, I have stuff to see this summer. This is one of them, and I'm going to get to parts two and three for July. And it's a, it's good. Part three also will be, a, you know, posthumously feature the final performance of Kevin Conroy's Batman. And I miss him a lot. And also, Mark Hamill, who re retired from doing the Joker, because, again, he won't do it without uh, him. And that's good. You know, I'm, I'm glad that we get to see him one last time. We're probably going to cry because I miss him so much because he was my Batman voice as a kid, regardless of his sexuality. And, uh, yeah, at least it's gonna, they're going to give me one last hurrah. So I like the first part of Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's worth your time. If you haven't seen it, it's on. It's already available on Max. Part 2 is coming on the 15th, and 3 will be right after that. So I'm grateful for this. It's better than nothing. It's better than DC not doing anything this year. So thanks for watching, guys. Acknowledge me, and I'll see you guys next time.